Alhamdulillah, I would like to go through one aspect of the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I want it to be a means of inspiration for us all, myself included. It is called waiting for the turning point in others. What does that mean? It's something amazing. Waiting for the turning point in others is part of the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, in his case, it was waiting for the turning point in others. In our case, because we are not prophets of Allah, it is a turning point within us as well. And for that, we should not be waiting. But for others, we are patient, we should continue, we should be dedicated, we should have hope, we should pray for them. That's the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did he do when he saw Abu Jahl? Abu Jahl was the biggest enemy of Islam. He continued making dua for him. He continued trying with him. He was kind to him. Although Abu Jahl was cruel to him, he continued having hope. He continued in so many good things regarding Abu Jahl. And he always felt that definitely this man is going to come if Allah wills to the deen. So much so the time when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, who was much younger than the Prophet sallallahu 13 years younger than the Prophet sallallahu he was a strong man, feared, loud, intolerant. The Prophet ﷺ used to make dua for him as well as Abu Jahl in the same sentence. He has said, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al Before I translate that, let me tell you something. When you see a person who's powerful in authority, who's got a lot of clout, and they're not Muslim or they're using their energy in a destructive way and you keep on having hope that you know if this energy can be used in the right direction it will definitely do a great service to Islam and the Muslimin this person has potential we're not looking at the evil that's coming from them we're looking at the potential the strength the dedication with which they're using these energies in a wrong way and we are saying if it can be channeled in the correct way subhanallah it would be amazing because this person effortlessly goes and makes people's lives difficult imagine if they had to be effortlessly going to make people's lives easy how brilliant it would be that is heavenly that is prophetic it's amazing he had hope and he kept on saying oh allah and this is the translation of that dua grant strength to islam through the acceptance of islam of one of the two Umars. One was known as Amr ibn Hisham, that was the proper name of Abu Jahal. And one was Umar ibn al-Khattab, the man we know, radiallahu anhu, later to be known as. So he kept making this dua and he kept asking and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you know why? He was waiting for the turning point in them, waiting for it. He knew it would come when Allah wills, if Allah wills. But for him, he knows his duty was to convey the message, to keep on being kind, be the best person, continue having hope, they will come one day. And they came. One of them came. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And the day he came, there was strength granted to Islam. The man used his energy. He used his reputation in society. He used the authority that he had to a certain extent in the right direction. Because he says, as soon as he accepted Islam, alasna al haqq Are we not on the straight path? And the Prophet ﷺ says, yes, we are. Indeed, we are. Why should we fear people? Let's fulfill salah in public. Let's engage in our prayer in public. Why should we, why should we be worried about these people of Quraysh who, that they may harm us, they may do this, they may do that. They can do nothing. I am there. Allah is there. So they had these two rows of people. One was led by Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and the other was led by Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. They marched in full view of the people of Quraysh to the Haram, to Mecca. For the first time, they read Salah in congregation. At that time, Salah was not yet compulsory. It was still a voluntary act of worship. And they went forth and they engaged in Salah. The Salah that was given in Mi'raj was that Salah which was now compulsory. And that's when it became five times, five times a day. That is later on. But earlier, it was voluntary. It was only two units and it was voluntary. So they got to the Kaaba, they got to the front and they read Salah openly they read salah clearly they used to face jerusalem at the time it's something unique but the point being raised is umar ibn khattab radiallahu anhu was really a man whom allah used in order to strengthen the deen and from this it teaches us never lose hope in people never ever 
no matter who they are, your children, your friends, the drunkard, the one in the clubs, the one on drugs, the one who has the worst qualities, keep on praying, keep on trying, keep on having hope, keep on being kind, and keep on explaining the truth, continuing to explain the truth in a beautiful manner.